This is Twit. The A500 dual fan CPU, uh, you did the review on this one. It is a big, happy black box of fans and cooling joy. It's How did big. it hold up in your testing? It's heavy. Yeah, it looks big. Oh, <laughs> without looking at the specs, how heavy would you right. assume this to be? 3.8 pounds. I'm going to go oh, high. Okay. You, you went high. It's 3.2 pounds. 3.2 pounds. <laughs> I thought I was a lot With higher CPU than that. cooler. Is it this a solid is, block of copper? No, no, no. It uses four copper heat pipes. Okay, at its base, literally, uh, right. the bottom of this cooler is direct contact heat pipes, which you're probably very familiar with if you've ever bought or used, of course, uh, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, which uses sure. four direct contact heat pipes on the bottom of it. So this is the same thing. It looks a lot nicer. It's more like the the polished black edition look from course from Cooler Master. But Corsair, this is their own product. They they have in the past had their Air series, which was the A. They had the A50, which uh, Josh on our staff still uses all these years later. And the A70 was the the bigger, better one. And then they were just gone from 2010 when the A70 was launched right. until 2020. At CES, when they launched this A500, they had no air coolers. It was all liquid cooling. Corsair has become synonymous with liquid liquid cooling in this industry. But they're all-in-one coolers like the H100, the legendary H100, and all of its uh, successors. But this thing, I have it right here, it's just a big, heavy air cooler. And it's it's like a big single block instead of being... You know, a dual tower design, although internally it is basically a dual tower design. It just bookends the cooler with fans instead of having one in the middle. What's cool about this, there's a couple things. Forget about the performance for a second. Right. This is the easiest to install cooler I've ever used and has the best fan mounting and adjustment system I've ever seen. So this is kind of a luxury thing because we're talking about a $100 Air cool. It's no, it's ninety nine ninety nine. So that's a is there pricey any, air cooler. Yeah. Is there any way to justify that? Well, most coolers you buy, like the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro Four that I retested for this review, it's a big dual tower, dual fan air cooler. Mm -hmm. It's eighty nine ninety nine. So this is ten dollars more. The, it still uses these little wire clips to attach the fans to the edge when you get the fan like centered over it and getting the middle fan in and connected is kind of a pain. And that's just par for the course. It's the same way with Noctua, although Noctua has, I would say, the best little metal clips in the industry. There's still little metal clips. Okay. So this is a sliding <laughs> mechanism where you can have the fans at whatever height you want and just locks in place. And like, oh, I want the fan here. And it just stays there. It's their ratcheting fan system. And then you can slide it all the way off if I didn't have the wires tangled here under my hand. But you can slide it all the way off. And that's the fan removed. And you can put whatever fan you want in this thing. It's just a plastic frame that has a slot beveled into the side of it. And then there's a corresponding metal track for it on the heat sink. And then you just slide it back down. Fans installed. So it's super easy to move the fans around accommodate taller memory modules if you have them and then the top which looks like you know like milled aluminum it's actually just a cap so that comes off and you can see the sort of dual tower nature of this because there's a big cavity in the middle here it kind of looks like a toaster slot and i estimate you could fit one half of a bagel in here which i did not try i should have the review really should have been can it toast a bagel, I could have put like an Eggo waffle in there. It seems pretty much ideal for Eggo waffles, by the way. Uh, but what's interesting is the the cavity here leads directly down to the two mounting screws. And this is this is very much a Noctua style. If you've ever used a Noctua cooler, it has these brackets that kind of are on both sides of the the bottom, the, the cold plate, and then it has these spring-loaded screws on both sides, and you set it down, and you reach your screwdriver through, and you tighten it on both sides, and you're done. So very, very simple. And the, the mounting mechanism, I have it right here, this frame is that same kind of knock to a style where it's a metal back plate and these two metal brackets on top, 
and they screw down and you have these four posts. Uh, it, it's, it's literally just like Noctua. And it, it seems to be strong enough to keep this 3.2 pound cooler from damaging anything. When it's mounted up, it doesn't really want to move around. I don't feel like it's making my motherboard sag. Although I will say, I would feel a little concerned about using this 24-7 with a budget motherboard. But I don't think you're you're probably buying a $100 air cooler to use on a budget motherboard. And more expensive motherboards tend to have more layers. So don't use this on a four-layer cheap right. PCB motherboard because it's going to make it flex. I don't care how metal the back plate is. So, and of course, I do all my testing on an open test bench, so it was horizontal. So, hey, no, no problems there. But really, if I had this inside of a case, I'd be a little concerned about using a cheap motherboard. But anyway, enough about the design. It is a very effective cooler with, there's an asterisk, because out of the box, if you just plug it in, even though this is a Corsair product, and we're used to Corsair products being Corsair software enabled, like their IQ software and having a USB port somewhere on it and RGB lighting, none of that. This has no lighting. It's the first Corsair product I've looked at in the last year or two with no lighting at all, which is very strange. No IQ compatibility. So it's just two PWM fans. And they spin up to 2,400 RPM, which is very high for a large uh, air cooler these days. Typically, we see like 900 to 1,200 RPM, somewhere in there low RPM, low noise, let the heat sink do the work. And this, if you leave it alone, and I was just using a standard motherboard fan profile with all this testing, this performed literally to the tenth of a degree identically to a Noctua NHD 14, which was their big legendary cooler from a decade ago that I still use. And I don't have a D15 here to test, sorry. But exactly the same, like to the point where it seemed like it was a mistake and I reran the testing because that's what I love to do is retest things to try to invalidate my own results. <laughs> and within like two tenths of a degree, it was exactly the same. So I just left it. So the same performance as a D14, but significantly higher noise levels. We're talking GPU level noise uh, here. So... If you leave it at like just default motherboard settings, if the motherboard fan speeds wants to want to ramp up after a certain point, and I, I, I gave it a worst case scenario, to be fair. I gave it a 9900KS, that's the Core i9 that's pre-overclocked to 5 gigahertz on all cores. And then I was running Cinebench all cores, and then I did a Blender, the latest version of Blender with the classroom render test, CPU cycles render test, which takes about eight minutes, even with a five gigahertz overclocked eight core 16 thread processor. And over the course of that eight minutes after warming up the CPU, we were getting pretty toasty, but this was still keeping the CPU down below about 90 degrees, all like max package temperature, which in the room was, you know, after I factored in room temperature and we got our Delta numbers, we're talking high 60s into low 70s for the loads I was seeing. And that's that's fine. It's still high, but it's fine for a 9900KS under load because this can dissipate up to 250 watts. And while the TDP of a Core i9-9900KS is rather hilariously low, when it's actually under full load, the system from the wall mm -hmm. is still pulling nearly 290 watts. So it, it's hot. And this did a very good job of coping with that. Like I said, unfortunately, it was doing it at 48.4 decibels at 2400 RPMs. So when I manually adjusted the fan curves, it got significantly quieter immediately. I didn't do every possible percentage, but I did 50, 60, and 70% fans and then compared it against the standard 100% fan result. And temperatures went up slightly, but they went up like a degree which with each change. So I, the 50% fans result was like four or five degrees warmer, but it was the quietest cooler of the group. 
at 50 percent it was like 34 and a half decibels so quieter than a be quiet dark rock pro 4 quieter than an hd 14 and quieter than the newer cooler master black edition which is none of these are loud coolers but the right. the result was very very quiet so you could you could figure out a nice trade-off between noise levels and thermals with this thing but still, it's a big ask to say, all right, you can you can play with like trade-offs between noise and thermals with this, but it's a hundred dollars, and you could spend less money and get one that has better thermals and lower noise, with the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro Four, which is ten dollars less and had the lowest temperatures of the group by about a degree, and was also the quietest out of the box. So it's one of those things. Like how how cool do you think the fan adjustment thing is? Do you do you think it's worth it for the ease of installation if you're only going to install it once? So for someone like me who reviews processors and constantly re-benchmarks processors, I could easily adopt this as my standard test bench like CPU cooler because it's so easy to take off and put back on. But for the average consumer, I find it really hard to justify $100 when... Unless you're using a processor like the 9900KS, you probably don't need this much cooling potential and can go with something a lot smaller and cheaper like the Cooler Master stuff. And I, I like Corsair. I just I wish this was like $10 less or maybe came with some quieter fans or do what Noctua does and what they used to do anyway because they, I think a lot of their stuff now uses PWM fans. But if you remember, a lot of the stuff came with low noise adapters, which would automatically limit the fan RPMs to make it quieter. And you could pick, do I use a low noise adapter and have like two degrees warmer temps or do I not use it and have louder noise? So something like that would be a nice addition to a product like this, where it's like, hey, 2400 RPMs is a lot of cooling potential. How about 1200 RPMs? And it's one of the quietest coolers you can buy. So otherwise, hey, it's a return. Otherwise. After- 10 years <laughs> to the air cooler market. It's still weird to me that this is a Corsair product because I just don't think of them when I think about air cooling. 